All right, here's a scene I had to create in a, uh, in a single day. Uh, so this is uh, a backdrop for a animated kind of kids show. Uh, it was going to be used as a plate, live action plate. Uh, some of you might have seen my master class that I did uh, a few years back, three years. And so this is kind of similar. I'm going to hit on some scenes that are completely different. But I figured it'd still be good to show for those of you who have not seen you know, this kind of method. So very simple scene built specifically for one camera angle. Uh, it is 3D, um, but it's built specifically. You know, there's nothing behind camera, so it's just real simple kind of scene. Here's the lights that I have in the scene. I kind of the same method. I have a light coming from the window. You can kind of see it up here, you know, kind of, you know, shining down into the scene through the window. I've got a plane on the outside that has just kind of a flat uh, incandescent color with a bit of glow on it. Um, I've got an ambient occlusion node in the scene that uh, gives us this effect for the render. So this is just that kind of uh, glowing shader, um, no lights at all. This is just ambient occlusion in the scene um, and some, some shader work. And it gives us this type of effect. So if I add the sunlight coming in, there's just ambient occlusion and sunlight. Then I have um, some, some fill light from the window, which is this light over here, uh, here's the fill light from the window. Then here's a bounce light in the scene. This is the bounce from the table, kind of facing upwards. So light kind of coming from the table, pointing up into the room. So it's hitting this back wall. It's hitting up on the ceiling. It's kind of hitting, kind of glowing out like a half sphere around this light. I have. So you can kind of see the difference here between no bounce light with bounce light. It's nice to have that uh, kind of gradients of tone as well, you know, kind of areas of dark and areas where it kind of falls darker into the corner. So hand placing bounce lights is kind of mimicking what happens in the real world. Then I've got another bounce light here that's more intense, like light that's hitting the floor on the white area of the wall. So if we look, this is way down here kind of on the floor, bouncing up. And then I've got a fill on the table. This is to mimic light that's hitting the ceiling, coming back down. And then I've got a, a, a separate little bounce from the table onto the wall. That's it. Nice, simple setup. So let's look at those. So again, ambient occlusion, key light, um, fill from window, bounce from table, bounce from floor onto wall, bounce back down onto the table from the ceiling and bounce onto the wall. Um, you know, the, this little bit of light here. And really quickly, we have, you know, a scene that renders really fast and uh, gives us a, you know, pretty good setup. And again, with total control over every little bit of light that, you know, that's bouncing into this scene and total control over, you know, what, what you want to do with your shaders and everything like that. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at another example. So let me open another here. Uh, let's look at the uh, this guy. This is a another scene that has uh, this robot's kind of office here. Let me go to a perspective camera. I've got quite a few more lights in this scene. We can look at some renders. Um, this is an interior that does not have sunlight coming in from a window. This is, um, you know, not a clear, it's a little bit different kind of setup. Um, very simple modeling uh, in the scene. You know, a lot of NURBS pieces, simple kind of simple geometry in here. Uh, so let's look at some renders. And I don't have these loaded into Maya, so we will look at them this way. All right, so this is what the whole scene together looks like. Here's ambient occlusion, 
just simple, you know, just ambient occlusion and shaders. So I've got some glowing kind of shaders for different pieces. Then I put one light, kind of a spotlight from the top. Uh, I gave it nice soft edges so that you don't have just flat light over the whole scene. You have, you know, a little direction of light from some unknown area that's kind of shining in and saying, look here. Then I have lights from the side, a little blue light from the right. And uh, again, I, I showed this example earlier, implied lighting. I made it, you know, put a grid in here. I put some cubes into the scene to cast shadows to make it look like, you know, kind of light shining in from this side. Then I've got the light from this lamp shining onto the table. Kind of see the difference on, off, on. Then the lights that are shining up here, down onto these. Again, these are just symbol spotlights. Um, you know, simple shadow on a spotlight, just kind of hand placed. Then I've got bounce lights in the scene. So light that's from the floor bouncing up in, you know, different ways from the floor. And then I've got an extra kind of specular only light from the top that kind of gives a little bit more definition. This area is looking a little bit flat. So I put a little bit of specular light and then another specular light kind of coming from the top over here just to show the shape and the form of each of these things. So if I kind of go backwards, so ambient, you know, kind of sort of key, more keys, you know, practical lights, bounce lights, little extra specular lights, and there's our scene. Uh, I want to look at another one that I had talked about in the uh, when I had done this a couple of years ago as well. Um, here's some color keys. I did this for a, uh, a master class I had done. Um, years ago, kind of painted some scenes, you know, some color keys to say, all right, let's see if we can create this in 3D. And I had built this scene uh, as, a, as a 3D scene in Maya. This is kind of how the final render turned out. Uh, very quick, you know, rendering. I'm not truly satisfied with this one, but, you know, quickly go through it again. Same ambient occlusion method, you know, key light, um, another kind of separate key, you know, light coming in from the top. Um, some, uh, bounce lights from the or fill lights from the windows more fill light from the top some hand placed bounce lights down in this tube some bounce lights around these kind of hot spots over here some more uh, kind of bounce from the top parts of this some bloom on the windows light actually facing back towards the windows um, some more kind of light glowing back onto the ground some extra specular lights for this jewel in the middle and some, you know, kind of rim lights on these uh, spear tips. Um, some extra kind of rim lights on these little, you know, metal horn things. Uh, some atmospheric glow in the scene. Uh, and, you know, this kind of beam here. So somewhat simple setup. All right. And the next I want to show, um, I worked on a project uh, this was for a advertising company and we were working on a film uh, I can't say the name of the film but you might be able to figure it out and for a popular uh, restaurant and uh, they wanted to do an online board game so this is kind of lighting for illustration um, this is definitely a very complex scene and we wanted to uh, you know have this kind of path where the characters would walk and this is my first sketch uh, so uh, really, really loose kind of sketch to help plan out the scene. Gave this back to the clients and you know, say, is this the, the right idea? They had very key elements from the film that they wanted in there. All these kind of strange places, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge, an old Viking ship, Big Ben, the Titanic. They wanted, you know, four distinct sections. They wanted a jungle area, a desert area, a kind of cave area, and a mountain rocky area. So I kind of separated it into four sections and we kept refining, you know, where the path would be until we got something kind of locked. And then I started to refine a bit more details into it in the sketch, you know, a bit more details, a bit more details of what things will be, add more plants, you know, more life, you know, a little river kind of flows through here, how the board game pieces, you know, more caves. Um, we had a logo that I blurred out here. Um, and the final, you know, goal was this restaurant off in this corner and they kept, you know, kind of adding, add more kind of width to the front, the tops, the sides. And I believe this was the, the final, uh, sketch that I was kind of going off of. I left it real loose and to say, all right, this is what I'm going for and I'll figure everything out, 
Uh, so let me go to Maya and open up this scene. Uh, I started with a real simple kind of layout. So those other scenes that I showed you already were things that had to be completed in a single day. So, you know, modeling, texturing, lighting, everything, you know, in a day, maybe two days. Uh, this one I had uh, two weeks, you know, to create the whole thing. So started with really, really simple geometry, kind of planned this out, took the sketch into my camera, did, you know, kind of a, uh, a back, you know, matte, type of thing, you know, to be able to see this through camera and you know, build out pieces one by one and match it exactly to the set. Um, let me open up the final scene. So you, this is a good example. So you can kind of see that this is a, a 300 megabyte Maya file. So this is not a, a light, simple, just a couple of cubes demo scene. This is a, you know, real serious, heavy duty scene. Loading quickly here. <clears throat> Uh, I used basic mental ray um, the same way that I had done with those other scenes um, but I tell you a couple different tricks you know things that I did um, I did camera projection because this is only going to be from one angle I took my actual camera my final render camera and I projected a texture through it onto the set so this is my main ground and I, you know, kind of hand painted maps so I could paint in little details and where, you know, cave type stuff would be and some of the rocks. And then I mixed this with a procedural texture, you know, for the ground. One of the tricks that I did, instead of having a one color ambient occlusion, I actually have the same I, I, kind of method, but I, I took this texture and I projected it through camera into the ambient occlusion so that I can have blue ambient occlusion down in the cave area kind of a warm pink in the mountain and the desert area and kind of a green ambient occlusion up in the desert area. So this is what the ambient occlusion by itself looks like in the final render. So let me switch back to Maya so you can kind of see this scene. So this is not a light scene as you can tell. Uh, it has, let's zoom out so you can see here, uh, it's looking like as for faces um, looks like almost two million uh, polygon faces in the scene. Uh, not the heaviest of scenes, but you know it's still still pretty intense. Um, here's my my actual model and my lights. So a little bit more complex than what we had done before. So quite a few more lights. Um, I have a sky matte. So this is a matte painting that I put back here. Um, you know, that would be, you know, kind of a, a, just a painted element, you know, far, you know, sky. And then I've got a sunlight that is, again, a, just a giant spotlight. So I could kind of control this, you know, coming into the scene. Um, let's kind of go one by one, you know, through these renders. So here's the ambient occlusion just by itself with the geometry, fully shaded geometry, um, but just ambient occlusion. So no actual lights. Uh, it's an amazing trick and you can get away with a whole lot with with that trick um, so here it is with the key light and the ambient occlusion and the matte painting so just that one spotlight kind of shining into the scene with ray trace shadows so that i can kind of get nice uh you know nice sharp shadows and not have to worry about texture resolution i didn't like that the sunlight was coming down into the cave area though so i put a shadow blocker and so the shadow blocker is simply um, a cube in the scene, shadow caster. It's just a, a cube I've hand placed, um, you know, kind of look through that light and this only cast shadows. It's not visible. Um, it just is a shadow casting object. So I can say, you know, uh, render stats. It casts and receives shadows, but its primary visibility is off. Uh, so that kind of blocks that shadow, you know, in that area. Then I have little bounce lights. It's kind of hard to tell the difference here, but there's little bits of bounce that are coming up. You know, hand place little bounce lights in certain areas that just look too dark. Then I've got some rim lights that I've put over here to kind of help these rocks stand out a bit more, kind of like the sketch. You know, so these are kind of hand placed, you know, bounce or kind of rim lights. Then I've got glowing lights from these uh, crystals, you know, kind of wanted the crystals to look like they were glowing from within. So these are just little point lights with soft shadows, you know, that come from, you know, these crystal areas. Um, I also have a trick that I like to do uh, with prim spheres. 
So if I look at, um, if you say volume primitives, I should say, volume primitive spheres. So if we look at these, I have spheres here. I just kind of place them in the scene, uh, tint them kind of purple in the hypershade. And what this does is it makes like a foggy cube. And so I can kind of mimic the idea of um, volumetric uh, light, even though it's really cheap, you know, prim spheres, I can use, you know, quite a few of these and give this kind of glowing light. So here we go. So this is without, oh, this is with, without and with. So it adds just this little bit of glow without being, you know, a fake glow. It's, you know, actually kind of 3D. Then I have some extra kind of specular highlights that hit these crystals, give them a little bit more life. A little bit of, you know, kind of a top spotlight on the logo. Um, and then you can kind of see the, the final image with, you know, a little bit of bloom around here. And there's a little bit of Photoshop work here, you know, adding in the, the waterfall and the mist. This is just kind of hand painted. Uh, the client took this then, you know, did After Effects work to, you know, do all the animation and then brought it into Flash and it turned into an online game. So, uh, you know, there's a more complex example using, a, again, a very simple lighting setup. Um, you know, but it, it goes a long way and was able to render pretty, you know, high resolution, uh, you know, in a short period of time. So uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to pause here and then I'm going to show you a different scene using uh, global illumination.